So, hello everyone and welcome back or to my channel. My name is Erica and today I will be doing the 21 questions uh, makeup edition tag by Ali Glines here on YouTube. I thought it was interesting and there's definitely some questions where I have to think a little bit to come up with an answer. So, yeah, I'm just going to get started. Uh, I'll put the questions down in the description box so you can, you know, look I mean, so you can just open it and copy and paste it and do it yourself and I'll also have Ali's channel either in the cards well for sure in the description box but um, I usually forget to do cards so that might be a big maybe but I want to thank her for creating this tag because it was fun so I'm gonna get started with question one which is what is your oldest makeup product I feel like a lot of people did makeup when they were a teenager. I was not a teen- no, I wasn't a teenager when I really started getting into makeup. So mine <laughs> is from- this is from two and a half years ago, so in 2018. I was in my 20s already. So this is the Clover palette. I make myself seem so childish. <laughs> um, by Too Faced and it was like a birthday present slash graduation present for myself. Because at that point I was already into makeup and I knew I, was, I would wear makeup for quite some time. And this is what mine looks like. She is very well loved. Um, but I did retire this palette because it's starting to not perform as well as it used to. But you can tell I did really like this while I still had it. I mean, while it still performed fine. And yeah, I don't think I would repurchase this though. Um, just because there are some shades in here that I wasn't a huge fan of and well so the three on the top and middle row I did end up getting rid of because they just didn't work well for me and these two kind of just got dusty with age just like humans and so yeah I have a lot of memories with this palette just because it's been in my collection for so long. So, it's only been in my collection for two and a half years, but I've already gone through so much, um, like, the craziest moments of my life with this palette. Uh, question number two, what is your most recent makeup purchase? So I did just place an order on YesStyle maybe three hours ago at this point, and I ordered my favorite lipstick formula, which is from a brand called Laka, and they're a Korean brand, so they stand. What's cool about them is they stand for inclusivity. I'll post the receipt somewhere here. Uh, and I did get some mascara. Moving on to question number three What is the first makeup product you've ever used? So, the first one that I have memories of, I'll say it later, which is pretty funny. Um, I think the first time I bought makeup, like to use makeup, was. A lip gloss from Bath and Body Works when I was in eighth grade and that was back when Bath and Body Works had lip glosses and to be honest I only bought it because it tasted like lemonade um that was the first makeup product I ever used intentionally so it was lip gloss and it was sparkly and it was clear so and it tasted good <laughs> question number four what makeup trend did you used to love but now you hate and you know you don't have to hate it but I would say oops um, when I was younger I say this like I'm a little old but when I was in college my senior year that's when I really started getting into makeup I had concealer and foundation and I just I don't know I felt like that was necessary in my makeup routine and I, I guess it's not really a trend but I don't wear either one anymore um, and I don't like either one, so I guess that kind of counts. Um, I used to like them. Yeah, I used to like them just to like have the security of having something to like, you know, even out my whole face um, for like an event. Like, you know, um, you know, when you go to special events in college, you're supposed to wear like a full face of makeup, and I wouldn't wear foundation every day, but I would have it. For those special events type of thing. Um, 
and now I don't wear foundation or concealer at all. Uh, moving on to question number five. What is a makeup trend you used to hate, but now you love? Honestly, um, I don't know. Am I very trendy? <laughs> um, my brother tells me I live under a rock, and I believe that to some extent because I am quite uncultured. I used to not like makeup mostly because my mother told me <laughs> that, you know, you did like, she's like, oh, you don't need makeup. Makeup's like horrible, even though she had makeup herself. <laughs> so I don't understand this, but um, yeah, she would say, like, you don't need makeup. And so I grew up as a tomboy too. And I feel like I still am to some extent, but uh, she she basically just like brought me up to hate makeup and like push it away. And so I guess just wearing makeup is something I used to hate, but now I like. I don't I wouldn't say I love it, and I wouldn't say I used to hate it, but you know, I used to not like it, but now I like it. Okay, that was too complicated. <laughs> Moving on to question number six. What is your favorite step in your makeup routine? Hmm, probably eyeshadow. <laughs> like, whose isn't? Um, I just... Yeah, I feel like with your eyeshadow, you can be very expressive. Like, you know, on the weekdays, um, I wear more neutral eyeshadow and more work-appropriate eyeshadow. Although I feel like it's not super work-appropriate, but, you know, I don't wear super colorful looks. It's more pink and brown and neutral colors but on the weekends I get to do whatever I want and even though you probably can't tell right now I'm wearing a purple duochrome like metallic eyeshadow so yeah I don't feel like I can wear that during the weekdays but on the weekends it's fun to do so that's why I like I guess <laughs> that's why it's my favorite step in my makeup routine and it changes as well, like, you know, even if you do the same, even if you have to use neutral eyeshadows every day, I still have, like, a variety I can choose from, like, oh, maybe today I can do brown, tomorrow I can do taupe, and stuff like that. Question number seven, what is a makeup product you can't live without? If you had asked me this when I was younger, I would have said a, a red lipstick, I think. But now, I have come to realize that... My brows are really, really, really um, non-existent, so um, I would say a brow pencil because it just changes the way I look. Like, I don't have brows, or I do, but it looks like I don't, so um, I feel like brows really change the way my face looks and people take me more seriously because it really looks like I have no eyebrows, um, like Voldemort. Question number eight. What sparked your love for makeup? Uh, Project Panning, actually. So, in 2017, I believe, I um, I was, like, at this point in my life, this sounds so dramatic, where I was trying to decide whether I would wear makeup um, or just, you know, get rid of my entire collection and just never wear makeup for the rest of my life. And then I found out about Project Panning. I did horribly my first month. And then afterwards, like when I started really using makeup, like I got my first um, high-end eyeshadow palette and it came with a guide on how to do my makeup properly. That's when I really started getting into makeup. And I would, so I started with like that eyeshadow palette and I think I did my brows better back then than I do now, which is crazy. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's Project Panning, which is funny because most people, they curb their makeup spending when they do Project Panning, but not me. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just so much fun to play with makeup, and so by forcing myself to, you know, use makeup, uh, um, I kind of got more and more into makeup, and then I realized that I did want to get into makeup, and plus... I was going into an industry <laughs> where there's a lot of older people and I wanted to be taken more seriously so I used makeup to make myself look older. Question number nine, what is the worst makeup look you've ever done? This is really easy. So actually this past summer in 2020, um, 
I didn't work. I was looking for work, but I didn't work um, because of COVID and it being really difficult for me to find a job. And so I got to do colorful eyeshadow looks and also I was panning a very pigmented blush. And I remember that day, <laughs> I don't have a picture because I don't really take selfies um, and mostly because I cannot get a good selfie. So uh, I will describe it to you. I basically look like a clown. I had blush like right here to my lip or to wherever, you know, you get peach fuzz and stuff like that. So it came all the way down to my lip. So that's the blush. And then my eyeshadow went all the way up to my eye and it was pink. It was so bad, my boyfriend asked me if I was okay. <laughs> um, and he usually doesn't notice those types of things, but yeah, it was a really bad makeup day. Question 10, which is, what is your favorite makeup look you've ever done? I would say, it was actually pretty recently. I did a very natural makeup look sometime in uh, maybe it was in December, but a few weeks ago, um, I did a natural makeup look where I had like, you know, just a one and done type of eyeshadow all over my lids. My brows are very natural. My lips um, were like this, so, you know, a light pink. And at that point, I was so used to doing like smoky eyes every day and just really heavy dark lips. And when I did that, I was like, wow, I actually look really good because um, I just prefer how I look naturally without makeup because, you know, it's the face I grew up looking at for however old I am <laughs> or, you know, like over 20 years from the time I could remember. And so it's just really familiar and comforting. I don't think I look terrible without makeup. I just don't have brows. <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, just doing that natural makeup look and having certain features accentuated, it was really nice to see and like a nice change from like my dark and heavy winter makeup. Okay, moving on to question number 11. What is your favorite drugstore makeup product? Um, I'm gonna go with this. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Setting Powder in the shade Banana. I'm like halfway through mine and I have a backup. <laughs> I did not know how good setting powder could be until I tried this one. <laughs> um, so if you bake with this powder, your makeup will stay in place like for over 12 hours and that is more than I can ask for because or you're, you'll not get greasy for more than 12 hours and I'm very oily so Having a product that can do that is amazing, and I don't need it to stay on longer for the, longer than that. So, this is very affordable. I think it's $4.99 or $5.99. And I specifically picked the shade Banana because it works well with my skin tone. I have tried using the translucent powder, but it does make me look a little bit more pale. But throughout the day, it starts to make me look less pale as it kind of wears off. But this one... It matches my skin tone and it doesn't make me look paler so that's why I like this one more and wow it's just really good if you have oily skin question number 12 what is your favorite splurge product this is the most expensive product in my collection and I did pay full price for it and where I live tax is about 10% so um, it is this this is the hourglass um, ambient lighting edit sculpture palette whatever um, the hourglass holiday palette from 2020 I got it in September which is why I paid full price for it because I wanted it like right then and there and I think there weren't any sales going on so this is what mine looks like obviously you can tell it's already been quite well loved I this is my first purchase from Hourglass, the first product I've ever used from Hourglass 2, and I think it's worth it. But I don't I didn't have anything from Hourglass previously. I would say if you already have a lot of Hourglass products, you probably don't need this. 
just finish your product up first and then when you run out of everything and you like everything from Hourglass, this would be the product to buy. But this is good if you, like I said, don't have anything from Hourglass because it allows you to try like their powder, their highlighter, their blush, and their bronzer. So that's what I like about this. And I do like most of the powders in here. Um, and I would be likely to purchase them in the forms of singles or like the more permanent line because it's, <laughs> it's a better value in my opinion. And I don't want to repurchase everything in here. So not that I can, but I think this is worth it. Like it's just so natural and like it really makes your skin look better in photos. I can't say it's the same for in real life because I feel like there's a lot of glitter in there. If you look really closely at my face, you will see it. But if I'm like filming or something, it makes me look really good. So yeah, um, I think this is worth it. But I know some people don't support Hourglass and I know that this is very expensive. So this was, in my opinion, worth the splurge. Question number 13 is, what is your most repurchased product? Yes, 13. So I'm gonna go with this. Oh, come on. This. Um, I guess specifically this mascara too. This is the Kiss Me Heroin Make Volume Control Mascara. I think this is the fifth one I've repurchased, so you know I like it. And this came in a two pack. I'm probably gonna open this tomorrow because I don't like my current mascara. Um, you can actually adjust the... Why don't I just open it now? Ah. So you can actually adjust the uh, amount that you get on your lashes, like where your lash length on the bottom. So right now it's set to full volume, but you can actually turn it to natural. So if I turn this... If I turn this... Did you see that? Look at the bottom. There's an arrow lining up. Um, but I always have it set to full volume because if I wanted natural, I would not have bought this. I really like this mascara, specifically the brown one. It works better than the black mascara. And I just like brown eyeliner, brown mascara. It just makes your facial features look softer than using like black mascara or black eyeliner. So. That's why I prefer it, and I really like this mascara. Kiss Me makes really good mascaras for um, Asian lashes because, or if you have really oily lids, but they're very difficult to remove, so you need a mascara remover with this one because it's very stubborn. Like, if you think Essence is hard to remove, this is worse. You will lose lashes if you don't have a mascara remover, or if you don't soak your lashes in um, eye makeup remover every night, so. Yeah, but for me it's worth it because I have the mascara remover and there's just no other mascara that works as well as this one. Question number 14, what is your earliest makeup memory? So, I have a very good memory um, and I guess one of the earliest makeup memories I have was when my mom bought a makeup set from Walmart uh, around the holidays and you know it's one of those cheap ones that comes with like a bunch of different brandless um, uh, palettes and like eyeshadow palettes, blushes, and stuff like that. And she bought it, I'm pretty sure she bought it to take to Asia and give to our relatives, but she kept one or two and my brother and I found those palettes. <laughs> and we were very, very naughty kids. Um, I feel bad for my mom, but we were like, Tom and Jerry <laughs> and so I remember one time she went to the garden and my brother and I got into the eyeshadow palettes and they were blue and purple so we took turns <laughs> using, using the sponge tip applicator to draw um, black eyes on each other's faces and bruises on our arms and then we ran up to her and we were like we got into a fight but I don't I really think she didn't believe us well, I mean, I know she didn't believe us because, first off, we smelled like cheap makeup. And second off, um, it really did not look like a black eye. But I think she thought it was funny. 
and that was like a fun memory I have of, you know, just being a kid and being stupid. Question number 15, what is your favorite place to shop for makeup? So, honestly, I feel like I get, I get my makeup from a bunch of different places. I believe in getting the best value, so, um, you know, if it's cheaper on the brand website, I'll purchase it from the brand website. If it's cheaper from Sephora, I'll buy it from Sephora. If Ulta is, you know, um, even if, like, Ulta has, like, a five times points multiplier, I know <laughs> that the number of points I get is nowhere equal to the amount I would be saving if I bought it for half off from you know, the brand website. So for example, say like, you know, I were to buy a palette from Urban Decay for half off, like Naked Honey. Is that $49? I think it is. So if it's $49, if it's half off, it's $24.50. But at Ulta, they, it's $49 and they have a five times points multiplier. 45 times five is 250. Is that like, eight dollars or something like that i think it's eight dollars off that's how much it's worth um that's eight dollars that you get in points but you have to use the points um on something else which means that i would still be paying tax on the other thing i purchased and i would still be spending more money in order to be able to use those points if that makes sense whereas if I just bought it from Urban Decay's website, I would be saving $24.50 and there's like no strings attached. Like I don't have, I'm not saving money um, in the future. I saved money now and I saved more money than I would have if I went to Ulta, if that makes sense. So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, but my favorite place to shop is probably like in-person shopping is Sephora. I, it's usually bigger than Ulta and they have more testers <laughs> this is pre-covid obviously and I just feel like it's a better environment environment there is cleaner and yeah staff are the staff nicer though the staff are definitely more helpful I've been to so many Ultas where they're rude to me but um at Sephora I just feel like it's a more luxurious experience but I do not buy a lot of things from there. <laughs> so I like window shopping at Sephora, but I think the place I shop for makeup the most is Ulta. Question number 16, what is your most underrated makeup product that you own? You know what? Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I already talked about a lot of products that I like, but I would say for my most underrated makeup product that I own, I'm going to cheat for this because um, I don't have it with me yet, but I can just you know tell you about how great the formula is it is the laka lipsticks the lipsticks their matte lipsticks are actually a gel formula so they're very comfortable they're actually pretty long lasting and it's just the nicest finish you can ask for from yeah it's not extremely matte so it doesn't look drying at all and it's it's just like so natural looking but not um well i mean obviously it's pigmented too it's just really natural looking and soft it's almost like powder yeah that's how i explain it. it's almost like a powdery look and it's so comfortable too i used to wear a lot of satin lipsticks because they're more comfortable to wear but i just don't like the finish of it because it looks like there's cream on your lips so that's why i do prefer the look of or yeah, I prefer the look of matte lips, but it's just so drying. <laughs> but because this is a gel lipstick formula, it works like much better. And I've used up a sample size of it. It actually lasted me quite a bit. And that's why I decided to buy three of them. Question number 17, what is the most overrated makeup product you own? Honestly, I own a lot of, I feel like I own a lot of overrated makeup products, but this one, <laughs> everyone knows about. So this is the e.l.f. Bite Sized Eyeshadow in the shade Cream and Sugar, or the color Cream and Sugar. So it's their eyeshadow quads. It looks like this is well loved, but trust me, I don't like this that much. 
people say this is like Natasha Denona's five pan um, palettes and if that's the case then I don't think I'll be buying Natasha Denona in the future. The formula is overhyped. It's just okay. <laughs> There's nothing that special about it. Um, this brown eyeshadow was a bane of my existence. Like, it. I never got to use it <laughs> and it crumbled like crazy in my collection after I accidentally dug my fingernail into like the corner. I didn't even go all the way down. I'm, it's kind of like this. Do you see? Right there. That's like how deep my finger went, which is not that deep at all. But it started crumbling. And every time I did my makeup, I would get like brown eyeshadow all over my hands, like sometimes on my elbow even, and I knew it was coming from here, so I got really annoyed and I just took it out anyway, and plus it wasn't really a brown I was going to use, so I didn't really care that much, but <sighs> these are overrated. Um, I cannot wait to get this out of my collection because as soon as I finish this shade, it's leaving. Also, these two are these two shadows look like they would work on my skin tone, but they don't. They're too light. They don't look ashy. They're just too light. We're almost done. Question number 18. What discontinued product do you wish would come back? So at first, I I think if I did this like two months ago, I would have said the Kiko Milano Green Me Brow Pencils. I was so sad when they discontinued that because it was my favorite brow pencil. It was extremely creamy. It was like a perfect replacement for my previous holy grail, which was the ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil, but I stopped supporting ColourPop, so I couldn't get that brow pencil anymore. And then Kiko Milano decided to discontinue the Green Me Brow Pencil, so there's no way I can get it anymore. And I feel like Kiko Milano is a fast fashion brand now, so I'm not shopping from them anymore, so I don't really care. Um, plus I found a brow pencil that I like even more than those, so that is permanent. Please NYX, don't discontinue your brow pencil. So the discontinued item I wish would be brought back is from Wet n Wild. It is their Coffee Cat palette. I don't often repurchase palettes, but I feel like if I used this up I would definitely run out and buy another one because this is actually my second favorite eyeshadow palette, and it was only $8.99. People didn't talk about this enough either. I feel like it's really underrated, and Wet n Wild did come out with quite a few releases in the summer, but they've slowed down now. And yeah, this palette just like, it looks like it's not really used, and to be honest, I haven't used it a ton. I have used each shadow at least once though except for the darker ones because I don't normally reach for darker eyeshadows like this anyway. But I've loved every single look I came out with. And as you can see, this eyeshadow is destroyed right here. I already have pan on this one. But this is my favorite eyeshadow of all time. I would, I would pay $50 for this eyeshadow because it's so pretty. And I'm just like saving this for when I can go back into the office after COVID ends and I can just wear this every single day as like a one and done eyeshadow and it's really pretty it like makes me look useful and it just makes your eyes sparkle and pop so it's like a universally flattering color and and I'll be so sad when I use this up but it's discontinued and I was debating getting a backup but I was just like don't be stupid there's probably dupes out there so yeah I wish um, this wasn't discontinued because it's such a nice and cohesive palette. Like you could just, you know, if you're like, what should I wear today? You can use the top row, um, like any matte from the top row and then pair it with this shadow and it works. And then for the same for the second row, any matte and the metallic shade and then this row and this row as well. Like you don't have to think too hard when you use this palette. It's just laid out perfectly for you. Why is this limited edition? I feel like this is better than the new eyeshadow, like their permanent eyeshadow palettes that they're coming out with. And that makes me sad. Question number 19, where do you go for makeup inspiration? Honestly, makeup inspiration just finds me. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, sometimes when I'm, I like to watch smaller YouTubers and you know, they, they can do really, you know, amazing eyeshadow looks as well. So sometimes I will just uh, copy their looks with the shadows that I have. Um, 
or uh, most of the time when I don't know what to do though I will look outside and the weather will tell me what to do I know it's crazy but like so for example today it was rainy and cloudy and foggy my favorite uh, or not foggy so it was like rainy and overcast I love overcast weather it's my favorite weather um, the sun's okay too but you know I love overcast weather because the weather, like, it's just so nice outside, it's comfortable. Um, and the light breeze is nice too, but not too much wind. And so I like to wear, you know, more grayish colors or more taupey colors. Nothing, like, not bright colors, so, when it's cloudy. So that's kind of what dictates my eyeshadow. If it's the springtime, I like to go for peach or cherry. Cherry. Mm. Peach or coral. <laughs> eyeshadow looks and in the summer um, yellow eyeshadow honestly I like to wear yellow eyeshadow year-round okay question number 20 what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future honestly Ali put this best less releases please like you know I will really want companies to only release like three to four times a year like some people might find that boring but if you do like a whole collection, I don't think it's that boring and you know, gives people time to really like do reviews and reflect on the makeup and you know, just be able to absorb it all before you know the next release instead of like ColourPop or e.l.f. they're like, what's new, what's new, what's new and then you know, it just kind of gets lost and you get tired. Question number 21, what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? More <laughs> sustainable packaging. So I uh, switched from plastic, like I tried to switch from plastic packaging to wooden packaging where I can. So for example, brow pencils, this one's wooden, this from NYX, it's my favorite brow pencil. I was kind of hinting at it earlier. Um, this is made out of wood, wooden lip liners instead of like plastic lip liners or lipstick that way I can get my money's worth because I use the entire thing up and it's more sanitary too you sharpen it and yeah just I guess more thoughtful packaging and more recyclable packaging and less wasteful packaging that's what I would love to see in the future so those are all my answers for the 21 questions thank you again to Ali for creating this tag and if you want to do it please uh, let me know because I would like to see um, everyone's responses I guess and I know they can get lost so uh, especially if you're not a big youtuber so yeah that's everything uh, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time bye